Hi there guys, Music Fan here. How are you guys doing? Uh, I thought I'd take the time right now to go on an album review and today, uh, well, ironically because it's 1 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> uh, I'm deciding we're going to go on an album review and uh, today we're going to review U2's 11th studio album, How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb, released in 2004. So now, the last album we had, which which was uh, all that you, all that you can't leave behind, that album signified a comeback for U2. I mean, a majority of the 1990s they had done a lot of experimentation with alternative rock, with uh, dance, electronic music, pretty much re reaching the apex with uh, with pop, and that album that album in particular had tons of more effects in its sound and it was a little bit more clubish, club culture driven but with All That You Can't Leave Behind it was a bit more of a conservative affair it's like the band decided to use the experimentation not overtly but to kind of support the rock band format and with that album they returned to the more basic essence of, of their band aesthetic which is being guitars, bass, vocals and drums um, and while that album wasn't so much a return to the Joshua Tree or even their post-punk era, the, that album certainly signified a, a, a U2 that was that was not afraid to re-embrace its more rock-oriented sound again. And uh, while that while that album was a little bit more of a personal, emotional album, and it signified. Um, uh, what it also signified was also a reconnection of between U2 and their American fans and definitely that's no more evident than the era post 9-11 particularly and that album really spoke to people during that particular era so really coming out of the Elevation tour the band then decided we should make an energetic uh, punk rock record that, that really looks back to our younger days in uh, Dublin, Ireland and uh, we should try to do that and in some semblances, you do kind of get that with this particular album. They had recorded various uh, more harder rocking, rocking songs, but the thing was though that they lacked melody. They lacked a lot of the harmonium, harmonious, melodious uh, melodies that were really a trademark for U2's uh, songs in the past. I mean, listen to Where the Streets No Name, listen to to with or without you listen to one listen to um even pride in the name of love they all survive on melody and something and one and i mean punk is not necessarily a melo a melody driven genre it has to do more with a sense of visceralness and it has to do more with a more not to say primitive in the bad sense but it's, it's more of a straight ahead kind of genre that doesn't necessarily well of course they, they're singing obviously but there's isn't any of the prettiness that is as often associated with pop music so instead you two decide to take a more melodious approach to this album which which is what you got out with atomic bomb in this album you two really decides to really bring it back to the past or, or at least as 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 what we'll see with songs of songs of innocence later on um, at least a cl at this point, the closest they'll ever get to their past at this particular date. Um, really, you you have a lot of these songs that that are even way more of a conservative affair than even all that you can't leave behind. And I say that because a lot of the tracks on here, even though there is a bit more of a of a rocker of a rock edge, no pun intended. Um, there, even though there is more of a of a, of a rockier sound here in this time around then 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 behind really this this album still relies on the sense of a uh, personal nature like the sense of um, this album still relies on melody it still relies on um, on melody you know and, and, and still relies on those to really bring the emotional emphasis home um, and it, and it quite succeeds in my opinion like I mean you have tracks like Miracle Drug tracks like Sometimes You Can't Make It On Your Own that song in particular which was written as a um, as kind of a kind of a send off a farewell, a farewell 
per se to Bono's Bono's late father Bob Hewson who it's been well documented that they haven't had the best of relationships since the passing of Iris Hewson which is Bono's mother and uh, and uh, certainly dealing with his own pers Bono's, Bono's own personal grief regarding his his father and he's come to terms with it terms with it now this song is also perfect for any whether it's a relationship or a friendship in, in many ways the lyrical content to this song really reminds me of kite from from behind in a way similar subject matter but it's much more emotional driven than that particular song but other, other than that also tracks like uh, one step closer which was really is the closest you'll ever get to to uh, a sense of spaciness with that particular track uh, really this whole album delves into a sense of the band trying to reach back to their center the re trying to with behind you kind of got that the band was trying to reach back into its roots but yet still keeping somewhat the experimentation of their 90s catalog or, or, although not as epic or as overtly as those albums in that particular decade however this time around that there's there's really little that that's retained on here if at all on this album this is a more of a rock and roll affair like tracks like vertigo especially vertigo which uh, of course you all remember or may or may not remember that ipod commercial uh for the ipod at the time and uh and that really famous commercial ad uh, that was used for this particular used for this particular song. Um, also, tracks like uh, "All Because of You," which really has a, has a really awesome rock edge to them. Again, no pun intended. And uh, I love tracks like "All Because of You" because it has has that that it's not it's not necessarily hard rock, but it's has a has a really Edge's guitar really is a big prominence on this album, and especially with "All Because of You," tracks like "Vertigo." Um, Love and Peace or Else, somewhat. Um, also, Crumbs from Your, from Your Table, too, also is a very rock-driven album, uh, as well as tracks like Yahweh, the last track. This is, um, is a pretty melodious-driven track uh, as, as a final closer, closer to this album. Uh, this retains a little of that of that um, sonic allure that you had with, uh, with Aldridge Kelly behind. A uh, little of that is really retained in favor of a more rock um, melodious approach to the songs of, of this particular album you have very personal tracks such as sometimes you can't make it on your own tracks like miracle drug tracks like um a man and a woman which is which is talks about the mysterious distance between a man and a woman it's especially a very romantic kind of song but yet it's very tender the way Edge plays those, plays those acoustic guitars really kind of lends a very tender um, feel to them to, to this particular track and uh, you also have your politically conscious uh, plea for peace songs like Love and Peace or Else and uh, and Yahweh I mean the former especially um, which really again kind of takes a, ver a very two-dimensional aspect to the lyrics you can look at it from a personal viewpoint of a lover trying to convince his, his 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 or her other lover to to stay in the relationship, or you can look at it in a sense of um, political unrest in in uh, places like the Iraq War or even the Middle East. In this particular instance, of what was happening at that around that time, pleading for peace instead of war. Other tracks like City of Blinding Lights. Um, uh, is is just a fantastic, amazing track. Like I mean, it's really the closest that the band possibly may ever get to another Streets Have No Name. Really, that sense of epic drive, the epic build up as the opening minutes happen within this particular song, it just it keeps building and building until it hits this epic peak crescendo in the chorus of this particular this particular track, and it's amazing. It's awesome. Of course, this this track is now associated with President Obama for his his uh, campaign uh, during the, the 2008 campaign and his eventual um, election as, as president in 2009. This track is as, it's nowadays kind of, of more reminiscent of that, is more associated with uh, Barack Obama more so. Um, 
overall, as for like my own personal opinion of this album, this is an album whose songs I really, really like. I love tracks like Vertigo, tracks like All Because of You. Especially I love Sometimes You Can't Make It On Your Own. Like, I mean, that song is especially. Original of the Species, I love that. Although I prefer the single version that was released with the music video, which I adore more so than the than the original one but the songs here I really love but as a as an album as a whole and, and this this is I don't deem this to be the worst U2 album in their catalog by far I don't but I can't necessarily say that, that this is amongst my favorites either um, uh, if I were to pick a least favorite track I would pick Crumbs From Your Table and it's it's a song that I like. Um, I love the way Edge, Edge has that lead guitar thing in the beginning of, of the track, which really kind of lends a catchy dynamic into this, into, the, into this particular song. But it just sounds so... I don't even know how to use it to describe it. Um, at times it almost sounds as if there's, I mean, nothing... Well, not that it's, it's not special, but it's... I don't know. It's it's, it's 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 one of those tracks that is is it doesn't come at you with a wow kind of thing. Nor does it, nor is it a track that bores you or puts you to sleep necessarily. It's just a good song. And and uh, while while I don't really necessarily expect every single U2 song to like blow me away or anything like um, this track. It's a good track, but it but it's, it's it's a track that whenever I listen to it, it just it just I don't know. It it just um, it does something to me, but it doesn't take me on that that incredible experience like tracks like Vertigo and All Because of You does. Like I mean, it probably is the way that it sounds or the way the band performs it. But um, it if I have to pick a least favorite track, this would have to be it. But as for the album as a whole, I mean, yeah. I mean, like I've said before. The, the tracks on this album I love, I like, but as as an as an album as a whole, this doesn't really rank a, amongst my favorites for me. Like that, and and I know what U two was trying to go for. They were trying to to get to really go go into like the biggest throwback in their career. Um, they were trying to return to that rock sound, that rock and roll sound. Um, none of the, none of these tracks are really that punky. None of uh, I think the reason why this isn't my favorite album ever is because while all the songs here are great and Bono's lyrical writing is great, it's fantastic, while while that is so, I think this album relies just a little too much on melody. Like I mean, like I think of tracks like Vertigo that took a big risk. I mean that that song is a, is a lot more of a, of a of a closer aesthetic to punk the closest song they'll, they'll ever get to punk rock music uh, or at least their post-punk era that, that they'll ever get and then the rest of the, tr the the other tracks more so relies a little too much on melody a little too much on harmony and relies a little too much on, on getting these songs to be played on the radio and, and it's not so much that I don't want these songs to be on the radio or anything like that or or, or or, or anything like that. I, I think I think what I expected more is a bit more of a musical toughness. A bit like I think of one of the outtakes to this album called Xanax and Wine. I love that track. I really do. Like I mean, I really kind of wish that there was more of that kind of heavy punkish esque sound to these tracks that that can give these tracks a little bit more of a grit and a little bit more of a of, of, a, of a bite to them but instead a lot of these tracks relies more on on harmony and melody and are a little bit more melodious in its sound than how I would like I mean and, and um, yeah I mean I like this album for what it is I'm not trying to compare this to anything that U2 has done before but at the same time and I'm not calling this a safe album either because this this album is deeply personal like the last one but it's just I, I I think I just wish that the band would have taken just a little bit more of a risk with the production a little bit more risk with Edge's guitar 
maybe try to find a a balance try to have found a balance between edges the edges gritty guitar and playing and and Bono's more melodious driven vocal harmonies I, I wish there was a bit more of a fusion between those two aesthetics but with with Atomic Bomb it seems more towards the melodious side of their music than the, the raw side of their music uh, but again that's just my personal opinion that's just my nitpick and that's just my reason why this is not amongst my favorites um, I would have to rank this album as a I'd say like a 3 or a 3.5 maybe like a, like somewhere between those the, those two scores like 3, 3.5 it's it's not a bad album. It really isn't a bad album. Like a, again, I say these songs, I really like Vertigo. I love. Sometimes you can't make it on your. I love uh, City of Blinding Lights. Love it. Um, all because of you. Especially love that track Yahweh. I love that song too. I just think that as a whole, as a whole. As a package of an album with all these tracks, I just wished that there was a bit more of a grit to Edge's guitar. I just wished there was a bit more of a, of a, of a, of a risk involved with this album, but instead this album is a little bit more melodious, and uh, I just kind of wished it took a little bit more risk with its melodies. But it's a good album. It really is. not U2's best ever work, at least for me, but it's, it's a good album. I like it. Yeah, those are my thoughts uh, for How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb with this album. Uh, tell me your thoughts of this album. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Why or why not? And uh, tell me what's your favorite song. Of this album. Speaking of which, I would say that it's a cross between Vertigo or All Because of You for my favorite song. Um, what's yours or what's not yours? And uh, tell me what you think. Um, as a music fan, uh, how to dismantle an atomic bomb, you too, and I'll see you guys later. Take care.